Thanks to the students from Emanuel County Institute for getting us started today. Let's jump right into headlines. And first up, the United States is now saying that the actions against minority groups in Iraq and Syria by the terror group ISIS are considered genocide. This is the first time the U.S. government has used the word genocide in over 10 years. The Islamic State has swept through Iraq and Syria in recent years, seizing control of territory with the goal of establishing their own strict Islamic State. The group has killed anyone in its way, including Muslims, Christians, and an ethnic group known as the Yazidis. This week, the House of Representatives passed a resolution calling the killing genocide. And yesterday, Secretary of State John Kerry agreed. Daesh is responsible for genocide against groups in areas under its control, including Yazidis, Christians, and Shia Muslims. The secretary Daesh went on to say that ISIS killed Christians because of their faith and forced girls into slavery. Genocide is the deliberate killing of a group of people, especially those of a particular ethnic group. Labeling the killings genocide could put pressure on the U.S. to take more military action. So far, President Obama has ordered airstrikes against ISIS and some special forces, but no large-scale ground troops. An American college student has been sentenced to 15 years of hard labor in a North Korean prison for allegedly trying to steal a propaganda banner while he was visiting the secretive country earlier this year. Otto Frederick Warmbier was detained back in January as he prepared to leave North Korea after visiting the closed-off country with a tour group. Last month, the 21-year-old was shown on North Korean TV, which is controlled entirely by the government. I entirely beg you, people and government of the DPR Korea, for your forgiveness. Please, I have made the worst mistake of my life. In a tear-filled confession, which he was probably forced to say, the University of Virginia student claimed he tried to steal a political banner from his hotel as a souvenir. North Korea is a very secretive and tightly controlled nation, led by an unstable dictator. Americans have been imprisoned or detained in the past and used as a way to bargain with the United States to try and get more aid and to end trade restrictions on the country. The U.S. Congress is now getting involved in the Flint, Michigan water crisis. Yesterday, the governor of Michigan, Rick Snyder, was called before a congressional House committee to answer some very tough questions. Let me be blunt. This was a failure of government at all levels. Flint's water supply became tainted with poisonous lead two years ago after government officials decided to switch its source from Detroit to the Flint River to save money. There are reports that the Michigan governor's office knew about the contamination for months but didn't do anything. And I'm not buying that you didn't know about any of this until October 2015. Outside the Capitol building, families affected by the water crisis arrived with water bottles and signs calling for action. And we got to hear from you guys, sending us your celebration of Pi Day. You know, March 14th or 314. For the past 14 years, Chenango Forks High School in New York has had a pie eating contest. Teachers and students both get in on the fun and compete. The event is put on by the school's math club as a way to get everyone excited about the topic. All the money raised from purchases will go toward fighting Alzheimer's disease. Some of you got creative with your pastry dishes. Grove Patterson Academy from Toledo, Ohio, well, they got a little crazy, partying for Pi Day. Some students even attempted a back handspring. Wow. And Elkins Middle School in West Virginia got in formation with an aerial view of the Pi symbol. That was amazing. Okay, after the break, major changes taking place at one of the country's most famous amusement parks. Maddie, congrats on paying off all those student loans. Finally, right? How'd you manage that anyway? I started tracking my spending, changed a couple of habits. Wow. I'm kind of living paycheck to paycheck right now. <laughs> I don't even know how I'm doing it. Well, have you tried saving a little? <laughs> I want to, but where's that money going to come from? <laughs> Bill collectors, they're the worst. Am I right? When it comes to financial <laughs> stability, don't get left behind. Not 
Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. Many kids are forced to work these sugarcane fields. In their country, boys like Jose and girls like Rosita work long hours in brutal conditions and don't get much schooling. But thanks to Child Fund International and its partners, Jose, Rosita, and thousands of other children have moved from the fields to the classroom. Now they'll have a brighter future. For them, sugarcane was bitter. Education is sweet. Child Fund International. Learn more at childfund.org. It seems like the tides are turning for SeaWorld. The theme park announced yesterday that they're making some new changes, and Tom's here to tell us more. Asia, SeaWorld has faced controversy over animal rights for years, but now they say they're listening to the public and they're heading in a new direction. The wildlife theme park SeaWorld is undergoing waves of change, with new policies for the breeding and showcasing of its iconic killer whales, all spawning from the controversy over the treatment of the orcas. For years, animal rights groups have argued that family-friendly shows at SeaWorld hide a more troubling reality below the surface. Something's wrong. The 2013 documentary Blackfish cast a harsh spotlight on SeaWorld's operations. Blackfish tells the story of trainer Don Branchot, who was killed six years ago by an orca named Tilikum. The company disputed many of the film's accusations of animal abuse and neglect, and SeaWorld no longer allows trainers in the pools with killer whales. But after the film's release, SeaWorld's value dropped. In fact, some parks, like the one in San Diego, California, have ended their killer whale shows. And the company has been suffering from low attendance at all of its 11 parks, facing a lot of criticism by activists who say keeping the whales in captivity is cruel and unnecessary. And a California commission has even banned captive breeding programs and has prohibited the importing and exporting of animals within the state. The commission says it was inspired by the Blackfish film. Yesterday, SeaWorld announced changes at all of its parks, replacing its traditional orca shows with shows that highlight the whale's natural behaviors in the wild. There you go! And SeaWorld says it will stop breeding orcas, which means this will be the last generation at SeaWorld. We are phasing out the program, so we, are, we, will, we will not breed anymore. People can still see them and learn about them. SeaWorld is also working with the Humane Society to help save orcas in the wild and educate the public about endangered mammals. And we're very excited about the end of orca breeding. We're excited about the idea that SeaWorld is going to do more rescue and rehabilitation. And together we're going to be advocates to fight commercial sealing, commercial whaling. These are big macro level problems for marine mammals. But critics have said the changes don't do much to improve the animals' living conditions. Tom Hansen, Channel One News. All right, coming up, we're getting centered with this week's Next Big Thing. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. week's MBT will have you rethinking your workout routine. But before we get into that frame of mind, let's see what you thought about last week's. We told you about self-cleaning jeans. Blue jeans that are anti-stink and anti-stain so you never have to wash them. So is it the next big thing? 68% said yes, just my size. But 32% said no, this idea stinks. Here's what you guys had to say. We are Mrs. Lee's 8th grade advisory class from Honey Creek Middle School. This is Miss Dixon's 6th 
grade social studies class for, at GMC Prep School in Millersville, Georgia. It's Marksville, sixth grade ELA class at Millersville School in Tennessee. And we think that self-creating jeans are the next big thing. Blue jean baby, LA lady. But some of you did not agree. We are at Miss Griffith's 7th grade class from Czech Elementary. And we think the waterproof pants are not the next big thing. And they're nothing better than a trash can. <laughs> oh. This next big thing will give you some peace of mind with a new way to maintain mental fitness. When you want to exercise, you can jump on the elliptical or do a couple reps at your local gym. But what about when you want to work out your brain? Meditation gyms are making it possible. Centers where you can exercise your mind. Mindfulness meditation, a Buddhist-inspired practice, involves sitting comfortably, focusing on your breathing, and bringing your attention to the present moment. In New York City, Mindful is a meditation studio that allows visitors to explore traditional meditation techniques in a contemporary space. There are many types of meditation, and Mindful helps you find the right fit for you. The gym offers a variety of different classes, ranging from Mindful 101, an introductory class, to emotions, a class where you learn to explore and ride the energy of your emotions so you're productive, joyful, and free. The classes run anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes. Today, about 18 million Americans meditate, a practice that is known to have health benefits like increased productivity and stress relief. So cool, I'm definitely giving that place a try. So what do you guys think? Are meditation gyms the next big thing? Let us know by voting and weighing in at channel1.com. Or better yet, send us a video to nbt at channel1.com. All right, guys, that's all for now. But have a great weekend, and we'll see you right back here on Monday. Here, spring is here, how do you think I know? I just saw a bee, and that is how I know. Spring is here, spring is here, how do you think we know? We just saw a bee, and that is how we know. Do the bee walk, and stretch your thing. Do the bee walk, and flap your wings. Do the bee walk, do anything. And look around for another sign of spring Spring is here, spring is here, how do you think I know? I just saw a ladybug, that is how I know Spring is here, spring is here, how do you think we know? Good morning, Schaefer Sharks! I'm Tommy along with Lana, Maya, and Taylor. It's Friday, March 18th, Day B. Today is National Awkward Moments Day. This is a day to acknowledge that we have all those awkward moments from time to time, as they are a part of life. And we officially spring into spring on Sunday, March 20th, so don't forget to get your free water ice at Rita's. And now, would you please rise for the Pledge to the Flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag. Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. You may now be seated. Please listen to our morning announcements. 
Today's weather, mostly sunny today with a high of 61 degrees. And did you hear possible flurries on, this, on Sunday, the first day of spring? For lunch, breaded C-shaped fish nuggets, mashed potatoes, and steamed broccoli. For dessert, fresh fruit choice along with your original healthy milk. Happy birthday to Vi Nug Nug Nugent, who celebrates her birthday today. And to Jade O'Neill, Maria Gallo, Danny Ling, Cameron Woden, Angela Furry, and our lovely secretary, Miss Wade, who celebrate their birthdays this weekend. Let's hear that birthday song. Happy, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy, happy birthday, 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 happy Today's shark announcements. And now here's, here's Mayo. Mayo. Brush day practice will be held on Saturday morning at 9 a.m. at BHS. Do you sing, dance, play piano, jump rope, play drums, or have an amazing talent you want to share? The Schaefer Talent Show is the place for you. It all happens on the last day of school. Be a part of our tradition. Start p planning your acts. You can join as a soloist or a group. For more, inf more info to come. Attention 8th grade students who would like to attend the field trip to Washington, D.C. Your $50 payment is due to Miss Franklin in room 201 by April 15th. Also, chaperones are needed. Please see Miss Franklin if you have any questions. Congratulations to 7A's Amazing A winners. Emma Lestraco, Brandon Rodriguez, Josie Weifel, home room 220, and Ryan Brown. Woo! Woohoo! Please stop by Ms. Schreiner's room to claim your academic prize. Don't forget to drop your coupons off in room 206, Ms. Hens' room. And we will have a shark drawing on Monday. Taylor, how many golden tickets have you collected? Um, only one. Wow, I've collected five. Of course you have. <laughs> hey, quick question. Why do they say golden ticket on them? I don't know, but I am going to keep saving them and placing the bottom half in the prize boxes. I'll, I'll start doing that too. And that concludes the show for today. Don't forget to get your free water ice at Rita's on Woo Sunday. Yeah. Yummy! Yo! Whoa! <laughs> Have a great weekend and make this day a good one. Keep it classy, stay beautiful. Saw her ladybug, that is how we know. Do the ladybug walk, stretch your bang. Do the ladybug walk, and flap your wings.